to tell the story. One time a guitar got me back. Because when I do the powder show, I throw the guitar like 20 feet up, it comes back down, and I do the finale. Ah, all right, thank you very much. Um, one night at, we were playing a smaller club with the, at, uh, with the drills, and I threw the guitar up and noticed too late that the ceiling was just a little, like eight, nine feet or something, right? So the guitar went up and the, the heel of the body hit the ceiling and the headstock jetted into my face. So I got, it just missed my eye. The headstock hit me there and then bounced and hit me there. So I had a cut here, a cut there. I went to emergency. I got, well, you don't get stitches anymore because they use like, I think it's crazy glue. Um, some kind of flesh adhesive. But the guitar got me back. <laughs> I, um, I almost lost my eye. And then I go to a session the next day and wearing sunglasses. Hey, what's up? Take the sunglasses off. Dude, were you in a fight? I go, yeah, with a guitar. <laughs> I, I like to think that we, they've gotten, the sound quality has gotten better. We, uh, in the beginning, we just used the camera mic, and then uh, we, trans we did the transition to miking the amplifiers, and then using a lapel, testing one, two! A lapel mic for my voice, so you could hear a nice balance of everything. And I, I also think miking the amps for a video is way better than how using a camera mic, because when you use a camera mic, you're hearing the whole room. And sometimes the room isn't very nice sounding. So it's nice that you're, you're just hearing the amp, which is just spitting out the sound of the, the guitar. So it's a true sound. And I'm, I'm really happy we made that transition and we're gonna keep doing that. Um, I also think that I just got a little more comfortable playing $100,000 guitars. <laughs> so there you have it. Okay, that's a good one. Um, it took a while. We, uh, for the first couple of uh, demos, we were using different things and stuff. And uh, um, I know one time, and we got a comment the other day about somebody loved the sound of the, the 58 Les Paul into a fuzz box. And they said the neck pickup just sounded like what it sounds like. It's, it sounds like, it probably sounds like that when you die. The, the sound was just so amazing. Um, the only thing with a fuzz box is it, it, uh, it colors the sound of the guitar too much and you don't really get to hear the guitar. So our point here is to hear the guitar. Um, and so and the, when we use the Vox AC30 at a low volume, sometimes you want a little compression so it doesn't sound so, uh, so the attack isn't so uh, abrasive. So uh, when we started using Vox AC30, I started using a Boss Compression CS3. And uh, we used a 1960s Tone Master made by Magnetone in Illinois. Uh, and we used that for the rock sound. And sometimes I want a little more for a lead gain. So I've been using a Digitech Bad Monkey. $39 overdrive. You know, I've, I have boutique pedals that are like two or $300, but I just I really prefer the Digitech uh, um, Bad Monkey. I should get an endorsement now. Um, and just a tuner. That's all we use. A little overdrive, a little compression. Try to keep this, the tone of the guitar uh, coherent. Really wanted to speak, so we don't do too much around here with pedals. We create a mental atmosphere. On all the guitars that we demo here, they're set up with uh, Ernie Ball Super Slinky 11s. And is it 11 to 50? 11 to 48. So 11 to 48, Ernie Ball Super Slinkies. We should get a couple of boxes of those for free. <laughs>